Hello there, welcome back to Planet Zoo. Thank you very much for joining me today. And you join me here in Lunar Zoo. And uh, today we're going to be building quite a small habitat. It's only going to be a short video this one because there's not a lot going on in it. Uh, so this is what we did in the last episode. We built our orangutan slash chimpanzee cage. Uh, it started with orangutans and they didn't like it very much. So I swapped them over to chimpanzees and they are much better in here, much more active. Although for some reason they're all standing around. It's quite eerie, isn't it? They're all just standing, looking. That's quite odd. Oh, oh there you go. There's one moving about. That's a bit better, isn't it? Uh, so yes, yeah, so that was what we did in the last episode. And it, what it meant was that I had an area here uh, which I wanted to put uh, a habitat in. So uh, my thinking was I wanted a stairway to come down here and then I would just build a nice wiggly path here to connect back up over to here. So that's what I did. And that has gone in. I've put the stone supports underneath this um, this staircase here and I've just filled in with some extra shrubs just filling in the gaps around here as well. So this is going to be a habitat as you can see. I've put some water in already and into this habitat as you can see it's only very small so um, nothing big can go in here so it's not going to be an elephant or a giraffe or anything like that no 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 it's going to be tapirs because who doesn't love a tapir and they don't need a lot of room this would be plenty for them uh, they do like to swim so that hence why there's a nice bit of water in there and um, yeah, so it's going to be quite a simple enclosure. There's going to be something a bit more complicated going on with the pathway here, which I will explain a little bit later on. But basically, I've got a project which is going to go into this area here, which will start today with this enclosure, uh, because the, the, there's going to be—I don't want to spoil it for you—but there's going to be a large building here. But the 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 back edge of the building is going to come alongside this pathway here, which will. Um, be built now and then expanded in the future when I build the rest of it uh, but the reason it's going to be there now is because there's going to be um, sort of a canopy over this pathway here connected to this habitat uh, so that people can come in under under the uh, the canopy here and and watch the tape is undercover you that probably sorry that made no sense whatsoever did it but uh, once I've built it you'll kind of hopefully understand what I'm talking about and uh, and see what I mean. Uh, so yeah, so this is going to be very simple and straightforward. I will also do this uh, little area over here as well with some sort of garden in it today. Um, so yeah, not too much to go through today. And uh, you know, not all my videos need to be an hour long of me building these big epic habitats. Uh, this particular one is just going to be small, but it's hopefully going to be detailed and we'll just show you what you can do with such a, a small area. Um, so without any further delay, let me go away and crack on with a bit of building. I was getting at now with this building. So this building is going to be quite a large building over here, but I needed to build this corner of it just because I was planning on doing this. So this is my my trellis again so this again is just copied uh, from elsewhere in the zoo uh, I've got some here and I had some over here as well and obviously it's just come in here and it's you know I just have to manipulate it around the corner here which I think looks really nice so uh, obviously there's a lot of detailing to do underneath but the idea is that it just gives you that dappled shade so when people are walking through here there'll be some benches and they can sit down here and enjoy the view uh, this obviously has got some detail so I put a proper canopy on here because I wanted this bit to actually be undercover give the uh, the tape here um, a swimming area that's uh, that's covered up so that is a very simple structure I just put some of this nice trellis on the side as well just to give it a little bit of detail there I uh, didn't continue the trellis around this side because I didn't want to block the view from the you know the people looking from in here and then I just detailed the water a little bit, not too much here, just some of this aquatic moss stuff down on the floor with some other grass in there uh, and some bulrushes and a, uh, a small water lily as well. Uh, and hopefully the tapir can climb down uh, off of these bits and go for a swim. And some rock work, very simple rock work just around the edge here. Uh, I've also put the barrier in, so this end 
is a solid barrier with, with some windows because this is going to be where their bed is so there'll be some kind of a shelter here as well um, and some bedding and then the rest of this is going to be open and it's going to be uh, a custom fence I'm going to build all the way along uh, along this edge here and down here and then eventually join it back up to this bit of fence here uh, so this area at this end will be their main sort of walking area and obviously there was going to be some shrubs and whatever as well um, so yeah like I said a pretty pretty simple straightforward habitat this one um, but with the the added feature of, of this this is my main thing that I had in my head about what I wanted to do here and again this all comes back to the aim of this zoo which is to do structures and buildings and to link areas together uh, and I thought this would be quite a nice way of doing that so it's going to link this building here with this habitat here that's that's the idea um, obviously it's not really going to look great until the rest of this is done but for now I think uh, I think you, you can at least see what I'm, I'm aiming for um, so yeah there we go so let me crack on uh, I should try and get the fencing done next probably so that I can actually get the animals in and uh, everything's always a bit easier once the animals are, are in and walking about and you can start actually seeing uh, where they can go and where they can't and what you need to put in so probably fencing is next on the list and uh, and then I'll get the tapirs in and hopefully hopefully they'll be happy uh, but who knows uh, so right let me uh, let me crack on with some more I need to have a little swim already who have we got we have oh how do you say that Tonatui Ton Tonatai maybe either way he's happy he's swimming and he has a girlfriend who's sitting over here at the moment and she is oh she's injured that's not good uh, Coke Sock god they have some weird names in this game don't they uh, okay, well she's injured, but that's fine. Hopefully they'll. Do, here comes the vet. So the vet's going to take her away and fix her up, uh, and she'll come back once she's healthy. Uh, so what have I done? I've built a fence, like I said I was going to do. So the bottom is just uh, simple logs, and then you have an upright log and a plank. It really is that simple, and I've just placed it all the way around the edge. I think it looks really nice actually. It looks uh, looks strong but it's not too uh, too imposing so you, it doesn't block your view or anything and and it just continues all the way around until it connects back up to the in-game fence on there. Uh, so simple and effective. So it's exactly what it needed to be. Um, as you can see I've done a bit of wisteria growing up here and then uh, just some wisteria growth up here I didn't cover it with flowers I didn't want to again I didn't want it uh, to be all hanging down in here I thought that that would be a bit too much uh, so you've just got the the flowers there and then you've got some just at this end as well just creating a little sort of archway here of flowers uh, and there is just just a few just coming inside here as well but not too many I didn't want it to be too over the top with flowers in there uh, and then around the back here I've um, I've put this rock on to the wall and onto the floor and uh, you know it just finishes it off tidies it up a bit um, I will do something else in here there'll be some benches probably uh, maybe a few plants or something I'm not too sure yet um, but yeah oh here she comes out of her box and nice and healthy there we go so coax coax sock I said I don't know is that how you pronounce that I guess so coax let's call her coaxy coaxy is fine and uh, there you go she's gonna go running off and, and see her husband over there um, so yeah I think this barrier works obviously I, I got the animals in and then I built the barrier I, I usually do it the other way around but when you're doing a custom barrier you want to make sure it looks like it can stop the animal escaping and it's strong enough so obviously with regards to the height of it it's 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 the right height they wouldn't be able to come on underneath it they wouldn't be able to jump over the top uh, and it certainly looks strong enough to stop them from just walking through as well so it's it's important to try and have an element of realism I think when you're when you're doing a custom barrier like that to try and make it look like it would actually keep the animals inside um, you know, I know it's a game, but I, I, I like to try and make it look realistic. 
Um, so there we go. So that's coming along quite nicely. I mean, this, this area here I really like actually. I think this is worked out exactly how I planned. Uh, so now I need to do their bed over here. I've got a bit of an idea of what I want to do there. That's it's something that I've not done before, but it's it's going to work hopefully. And then this area over here will just be decorated with some shrubs and plants, and I need to dot a few enrichment items around as well. Um, and I still need to do something in this area here. Don't know what I'm doing there yet. Uh, hopefully some inspiration will hit me at some point soon. Uh, look, going for another swim. This is him, isn't it? Yes, Tona Tui. Tona Tui, is that about right? Yeah, why not? Right, let me go away and do a bit more. And uh, I'll come back and show you in just a second. I have finished up our habitat. Um, I was just having so much fun building that I didn't really really stop to um, to save the game and uh, and show you my my work really. But I haven't actually done that much. Um, it was basically what I said. So uh, I built myself a little media platform at the end here. I mean, oh, just look at the little baby ones. I've turned off breeding, but I'm tempted to let these guys breed because the little baby ones just look fantastic. So as I said, I put in some enrichment. I managed to fit this um, foraging, is it a foraging tray, this one? Yeah, forage box. Uh, managed to come into this end, which I was relieved because I, I wasn't too sure if I'd left enough room for it. Uh, so that's in, and then you just smooth the edges off with some, some shrubs. Obviously the rock work as well just blends that in a little bit. Uh, so there's some shrubs under here, uh, a couple of benches. Uh, continuing with the shrubs, um, nothing too much because like I said I don't want to block the views here. Um, some more shrubs around here and some enrichment as well. Uh, actually I'm not going to point the camera that way because I don't want to show you what I've done over there just yet. Um, more enrichments, you've got a scratching post, a food stick there, a tyre, a couple more shrubs just in the corner here. I wanted to leave this fairly open. Uh, they're quite big animals so they do need a bit of space just to actually walk around us so I didn't want to fill this up with shrubs. Um, oh look at him, he's having a right old dig around in there, isn't he? So yeah, so there's um, there's just enough shrubs to, to make it look kind of natural and, and 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 occupied, but there's plenty of room for them to actually just walk around as well. Oh look, she's having a nice old scratch there, and then a swim. Go on, dive, dive, dive. No, she changed her mind. Fair enough. Uh, right, so we've got another feeding station thing here, and then this was my little idea that I'd, I'd not done this before. So it's a basic, a very basic shelter, just some roof uh, pieces and legs. Uh, but what I've done is actually just create a dip in the ground with the um, with the bedding in the bottom, and it works really well. They do, they love coming in, and they they sort of lie down in this this hole, and uh, I, it, it also means. The, the, my theory was that I didn't want this to stand up too high. I didn't want this shelter to have to be higher than this pathway. I wanted you to be able to stand on this pathway and look over uh, at whatever I build beyond. I didn't want this roof sticking up here. So that sort of forced me to make the bedding lower, which is why I've created this dip in the ground. Uh, and it works really well because it means that the staff can walk down and underneath here as well. Whereas if the ground was flat, I don't think the staff would be able to walk underneath it. Um, I think the animals could probably still get in there, but it wouldn't look as good. And I think that looks really cool having that as a sort of a sunken bed area for them. So yeah, I'm very happy with that. Uh, the glass, I just changed to make it one-way glass. Um, that's that's purely an aesthetics thing. Uh, it just gives the the animals that feeling of privacy when they're lying down in here for start they're sunk in the ground which would provide them a certain amount of of privacy and you know they're going to feel quite safe uh, but also with these this glass being tinted it means that uh, they don't just see tons of people standing there uh, staring at them so that's uh, that's why I've done that uh, there's also a scent bowl at the back here as well uh, and then also what I did do just on this corner here because their bed is just here I purposely put shrubs here and another one of these signs as well so that people can't stand here and stare in you really need to be here looking through the glass where the animals then can't see you I didn't want people to be standing just here and I know technically in the game they will stand here and look uh, but in real life you would you would stand here and look through the glass instead um, so the, the nearest you can get to them is over here which is, I, th I felt is far enough away that uh, um, you know you're not 
you know, intruding on their privacy. And there you go, just to prove my point. They love lying down in there. Happy little tapir, that's what we like to see. So there we go, so that is my tapir habitat. So let me just zoom out and show you that. Um, so it is, it is simple, I know that it's not the most exciting thing you've ever seen, but I do think it works nicely. It fills this gap in, it's going to link nicely to the building that's going in here. And you know, I have been as creative as I can with it. So yeah, it's not the most creative thing, it's not the most unique uh, habitat you're going to see, but um, I think it's nice, I like it. It fills the gap in nicely and um, I, I, I'm certainly getting better at just using the right amount of shrubs, I think. Um, I mean, that's just my opinion, but it's not too sparse and it's not too dense. So I think I'm I'm doing okay. I really like the custom fencing that I've done on this, this habitat as well. So I am very happy with the result. Now, the other thing I did was this small area of garden just behind the camera here. Um, and I've gone with sort of a modern art type thing. So let me turn the camera and show you what I did. Because I just wanted to fill the gap and I really wasn't too sure what to do so I kind of I, w I went a bit modern with it so it's very simple it's uh, you know obviously a, a line of little plants down each side these lovely big metal pieces made into an archway with a nice um, what is this tree I can't I can never remember is it a, it's a cherry blossom of course it is yeah so you've got the cherry blossom tree in the middle here and then these are these uh, these flowers that I've just turned into circles uh, classic flower beds uh, and then just some topiary balls in the middle of those two so yeah it's just I don't know it's something a bit different isn't it um, you know I want to try out new things when it comes to um, the gardens in this zoo and I thought that was quite unique I, I kind of like the archway over the top of the tree so yeah hey it's different it's it's nice I like it it's uh, I think it fits in there quite nicely uh, the other thing that I did is also I put this archway in here uh, I don't know why I was just looking at this and I kind of I kind of felt like that needed some sort of entrance there like you are going up into a new area of the zoo uh, and it also mirrors the archway here nicely you know kind of you know the two shapes kind of go together um, I, I didn't do it here I, d I think the reason I haven't done it here is because it feels like all of this pathway is actually part of this habitat with the tapirs in so you're not you know if you're standing here yes you're looking at the chimps but you're also mainly probably looking this way at the tapir and so as you go here you're still looking at the tapir you're still looking at the tapir you come up here you're still looking at the tapir and then you turn around and you go into a new area but by the time you're up here I can't really do an archway here so the only place I could do it was here and it just didn't feel like a, the right place to have an archway whereas over here when you go through this archway you are leaving this area of garden uh, and you are going into a whole new thing which is raised up in the air uh, and you're going up into the sky on this walking platform so that was kind of my my thinking maybe i'm overthinking that and maybe you're just listening to me going what are you dribbling on about you crazy man uh, but you know i do i do overthink these things i don't just um I don't just put things down for the sake of it. I, I plan and I think and there's usually some logic behind what I do. Um, but of course that is my logic, not necessarily everyone else's logic. So yeah, I like it. That's all that matters. Uh, and I like this. I like this little modern garden thing that I created as well. Um, yeah, so there we go. Right, so that is going to do it for this episode. So um, just a short one, I think, and a pretty simple one. But I, I, I kind of like, I, I especially like this area here, this um, this sort of canopy that I've created. And obviously, the next project is going to be this one here. Um, now, I don't want to spoil it too much, but I, I have actually already done this project. And it turned into a mammoth epic building um, and I can tell you it's going to be at least two videos because it, there is so much going on in this building um, so yeah so it, it, it ends up being a very large building with uh, five or six habitats inside so it's uh, yeah quite quite big it's going to be a couple of episodes um, 
and it was so much fun <laughs> so much fun and i do think that the end result is really good so i'm very much looking forward to um talking you through all of that um so yeah so but for, but for now that is going to do it for this episode so thank you very much for joining me today i do hope you've had fun i certainly have and hopefully you can join me in the next episode where we will be moving on to this epic project here um, but until then thanks very much and uh, hopefully i'll see you soon so take care and goodbye for now <laughs>